The original Transformers cartoon was known for its blurry lines when it came to continuity. Things like, what is the right color for Rumble? I must have static in my rectifiers. Now that's the smartest thing you've said all day. Really? Hey, what's going on? The proper origins of the Constructicons. They were worth the time we spent building them in these caverns. Back on Cybertron, we all admired your buildings, Grappa. They were works of art. And this one. Who became Cyclonus? Now I'll be diving into spoilers if you've never seen it, so be prepared. Hey, you're not supposed to be in here. Who says? Ah. Hey, I'm stuck up here. Everybody's gotta be somewhere. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help us bring you more content like this. Cyclonus is the loyal second-in-command to Galvatron. Released as part of the 1986 lineup of Transformers toys, Cyclonus was the Decepticon space jet sold alongside Scourge, the blue space hovercraft, as one of many new characters created for Transformers the movie. In the film, he uses space jet form to carry Galvatron into battle. My coronation. Coronation, Starscream. This is bad comedy. Cyclonus, transform and attack. Cyclonus also took down Hot Rod and Cup Shuttle in space. In Season 3 of the cartoon, he shows himself to be a worthy Decepticon when he leads the Decepticons to find his leader, Galvatron, after he was thrown across the universe after his battle with Rodimus Prime. Upon finding his leader in a pool of plasma on the planet Thrall, he wisely sent a sweep to pull him out. Cyclonus sometimes would take the brunt of Galvatron's abuse. While his loyalty was without question, Cyclonus thought it was best to bring Galvatron to the intergalactic psycho ward, Torculon, to help repair his frayed psyche. He exhibits a severe failure in reality processing and a malignant plasma neural tick. You were wise to bring him here. In the original 1986 movie, Megatron and a group of his Decepticons are discarded in space after the Battle of Autobot City. Welcome, Megatron. There they run into Unicron, the giant planet-eating planet Transformer, who rebuilds Megatron into Galvatron. Behold, Galvatron. The rest of his troops are rebuilt as well. Now, if you're paying attention, you will notice that when they are about to be reformatted, you can tell that Thundercracker, followed by Shrapnel and Kickback, are brought to the left. Meanwhile, Bombshell and Skywarp are brought to the right. The next shot shows the gray bodies of Thundercracker in the forefront, with the two Insecticons behind him, and are reformatted into the same body type. Scourge is obviously Thundercracker, and the other two are Sweeps. This isn't contested, at least in Thundercracker's case for the most part, as it's clear to the audience who is who. But in the next clip, Bombshell is in the forefront, while Skywarp is behind him. Both become the same body type as well. The next shot is where the confusion sets in. One Cyclonus, followed by another. Cyclonus's Armada. And his Armada. And then Galvatron's ship is introduced. Open Ultra Magnus and every other Autobot until the Matrix has been destroyed. As Galvatron boards his vessel, only one Cyclonus, 
followed by Scourge, and now three sweeps fly across the screen. It's at this point that Cyclonus is now one character throughout the rest of the movie and season three, barring any animation mishaps. While the sweeps are Scourge copies and multiply in number. Sweep six and seven coming in for a strike. If we're to follow it at face value, it would be exactly as Unicron himself said. I will provide you with a new body and new troops to command. However, fans could not let this one go. We all know that Megatron became Galvatron. It's easy to see that Thundercracker became Scourge. And it's safe to assume that Kickback and Shrapnel became sweeps. With Cyclonus, fans could not agree. To some, he was the loyal trickster, Skywarp. Problems, Rumble? Is the big bad ice too tough for you? To others, he is the Insecticon master of mind control, Bombshell. I love warping minds for you, Megatron! <laughs> Fans who believe he was Skywarp have a multitude of reasons why he became Cyclonus. For starters, the 1986 toy catalog would replace Skywarp and Thundercracker from the Decepticon planes with two new toys. The Conehead Decepticons, Ramjet, Dirge, and Thrust are still present since they were still being sold, and they show up in Season 3. The blue hovercraft Scourge replaces the blue F-15 jet Thundercracker, while the purple space jet Cyclonus replaces the black with light purple highlights F-15 jet Skywarp. From a toy perspective, this makes sense. Megatron has been replaced by Galvatron, and his troops follow suit. Furthermore, on the toy catalog, the Insecticons are still being advertised. They also appear in Season 3, but that could be considered an animation mistake. And the Insecticons do have the ability to clone themselves. This is no illusion, Autobot. <laughs> Prepare for termination. Note that they also still advertise Starscream, probably not to give away that he was dead too, or that he was coming back as a ghost. The shadow of my former self, don't you think? Also, Skywarp was loyal to Megatron. While he wasn't intelligent like Cyclonus, what should I do? Follow the trail, dummy. He was the Decepticon who revived his leader first. Why not promote the Decepticon who followed Megatron right from the first episode? Megatron, my leader, we not alive again. Furthermore, Bombshell has, like his Insecticon cohorts, betrayed Megatron more than once. He was very intelligent, though. His Cerebro shells were able to control other Transformers when he needed to. Like this. And he helped upgrade Nightbird to attack the Autobots, making Starscream extremely jealous. She looks like some earthly play puppet. How could this untrustworthy bug become second in command of the Decepticons? At least that's what Skywarp proponents will tell you. To the ones who simply believe that it's bombshell, personality, loyalty, and color are irrelevant. Storyboards make it clear that the Cerebral Insecticon was the only one being changed into Cyclonus. Even though Skywarp is present, those on the bombshell side state that he became a sweep like the rest. Bombshell is in the forefront, and we have one Cyclonus. So that's it, case closed. Even the IDW movie adaptation laced it over, still making Bombshell Cyclonus, with Skywarp becoming a background armada. But they also killed Shockwave in that comic, which is a discussion for another day. The 3H BotCon comics featured both Skywarp and Cyclonus side by side, having Skywarp state, even when you were a bug, I hated your stinking circuits. However, in Japanese continuity, the E-Hobby comics imply that Cyclonus was once Skywarp, and he regains his ability to teleport, which he used to have. This only adds more fuel to the fire. Even the UK comics state that he was once Lifespark, a misunderstanding about his identity from an early draft of the film. In that early draft, instead of throwing them out to space, the Decepticons returned to Cybertron, and they brought their dead to the Decepticon Hall of Heroes to place their life sparks into urns. It's here that the Decepticons battle for who would take over as leader of the Decepticons. 
The resulting battle would end up causing one of the statues to topple onto Megatron, sending his life spark along with the ancient Decepticon hero's life sparks into space, where they meet Unicron. The script then states that these life sparks became Cyclonus, Scourge, and their clone counterparts. While this doesn't happen in the finished film, we do see the Decepticon statues during Starscream's coronation. Now there are those in the third camp. They believe that only Megatron was alive when the Decepticons met Unicron. He rebuilt the carcasses into brand new Decepticons for Galvatron to command. Also, the Transformers Universe profile books, which were written by Bob Budiansky before the script was finalized, have the profile for Cyclonus, which state that he is built from the parts of dead Decepticons and remnants by Unicron. This can make the whole argument irrelevant. Out with the old and in with the new. In fact, this is exactly how the script of the movie handles the new Decepticons. There is no mention of which Decepticons are thrown out of Astrotrain, and it refers to them as dented, dinged, and dead as they are floating through space. It then states that their bodies are remolded into the new Decepticons. The idea that Scourge had copies called the Sweeps carried over with Cyclonus. He would have the same body type as duplicates, known as his Armada. But this concept was dropped during production. This could also bring in another argument that he is literally a Frankenstein of both Skywarp and Bombshell. While the storyboard shows Bombshell, the instructions underneath says long shot on other Decepticons, meaning more than one. Since there's only one Cyclonus moving forward, the intelligent and loyal Decepticon could be exhibiting aspects of both. Also, for a bit of clarity, some think that the Cyclonus clone was killed by Grimlock when the Decepticons attacked during the shuttle escape. While this did happen in the IDW 20th anniversary comic, the movie shows that a sweep explodes from Grimlock and the Dinobots' fire breath. When Cyclonus was hit, Galvatron was piloting him. This does, however, raise the question if the sweeps were fully sentient. But that's a discussion for another day. So you're probably wondering what I think at this point, right? It's not your place to think. My theory is that it most likely makes sense for Cyclonus to have once been Skywarp, with bombshell clone parts used in the mix. All of the sweeps were once Insecticon clones, since the originals appear later in the film, and they even appeared in Season 3, even if I much rather see them squished. This probably also is why they seem to have the ability to replicate, hence sweeps 6 and 7. So to me, Cyclonus was always Skywarp. But what do you think? Are you on the Skywarp side, or on the Bombshell side? Or are you on the side that he is just a new character, or both combined? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. For more discussions like this, be sure to subscribe and check out my other videos as well. I'd like to thank my patrons for your support. I have more Transformers discussions like this coming soon, so stay tuned. And as always, until next time, till all are one. In the days of Megatron, it was not like this. You mean Galvatron. Hey, Galvatron! Hey, Galvatron! Well, they were the same guy. <laughs>